Hey YouTube, we're gonna today's uh, task is gonna be to change out the uh, ignition switch here on this uh, 1963 Chevy Impala hardtop. Here's the part number, just in case you needed it. Um, the price of this little thing is about uh. Let's see what I got here. Uh, with taxes and everything, if you want to expedite shipping, you get about thirty-four forty-one, and that's with expedited shipping. Let me stick that right there. Um, that's going in the car. The tools you're gonna need for this is a uh, the original key or a key of the car. You're gonna need a, uh, a paper clip. Yeah, the two little holes right there. You want to turn it to the uh, lock position. You stick this in the left hole until you feel like the little spring mechanism. You turn it with the key and it should pop out. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, key in the hole, ignition, grab together. Pop. See, just popped out. Just don't drop this because it has all your little tumblers and stuff in there. All right, so you just want to sit that down there. Nice and soft, put your paper clip down. So you want to remove the bezel that just screws off. Sometimes these things are crazy hard. They sell like a bezel remover tool, but uh, I don't have it. And then the previous owner scratched the hell out of this thing. So it's just gonna get set to the side for right now. All right, so the items in the box or that's everything. The actual ignition switch with the lock cylinder look like there's some kind of guide that goes into there and the hole on the side we'll see what it looks like when we get the old one off um and then where these little look like copper and aluminum rings go i guess mounting ring right there maybe um so uh stay tuned let me figure this out and i will give you great instructions when i return one second all right, I found to get this out a lot easier it would be to take out the radio just because you got the cables and everything for the uh, floor vents and the thermostat right up in here. And I took off the bezel. I mean, the, the, the trim piece that went here it wasn't hard. It was already broken because of all of that and the piece for the radio. But uh, here's the switch here. This is what it looks like. So you have like uh, the silver, I guess, locking ring. This little copper piece here and then this other one here so that's what we got here one two three so let's go ahead and imitate what originally came off Let me take this out and uh, bring it in the light Yep, and my parts came in from Classic Industries. These are the new seat belts and the uh, weather stripping for the doors and the trunk strip for the trunk. Uh, they are a great place to order parts from. And they even send you a nice lovely catalog for your vehicle so you can order anything and everything. Shipping a little, uh, little laggy because they have to get it from the manufacturer or whatever it's getting it from, it's like third party. But other than that, it's there. So here's the weather strip, seat belts, weather strip. And I'll do another video on that to show how to put all the stuff on there. All right, so old switch, new switch. You just want to verify that they're the same when you get it. So like that. That. okay so we got two of the same and this is from AutoZone now it actually matches up all right so put that down there put that down there be right back all right there it is I just imitated what's already here now I can't tell you if this is correct or not and I have no idea what this little brass piece here is for or uh, copper I'm turning brown so it must be copper and it says, uh, I guess it's the original, it says, Assemble, Assembly in Mexico. All right, it's a game from Mexico. All right, so um, it looks like it has a little bend up, so let's copy what I see. Bend it up. <clears throat> All right, 
Time it goes to get back in the car. And this little metal clip thing was pointing down, by the way. Looking at the other one. And it does have these, like, little, uh, let's say, like a cutout. It's like a flat spot. So it only goes, like, one way kind of thing. So it just rotates around. Something like... One spot right there. That's as far as I got with this. So, like I say, I can't tell you if the old one is correct or not, but that's how I took it off, and it worked on the car before. So, let's go stick it back in. No problem is just getting it in here without this stuff falling apart. <laughs> so, I guess when you put it back through the dash and you screw down the bezel on it to tighten it down. I guess all three of these pieces uh, lock on to each other, maybe, which you know don't don't look right to me. But like I say, I'm just going back with what I saw. I can't tell if this is correct or not. If you uh, know any different, please comment and maybe send me a link or something, and maybe we can better put this in there. All right. And uh, next thing to do is just uh, stick it back through the radio piece, plug the uh, harness back up to it, stick it back through. And then uh, reinstall uh, the bezel that holds on to this. And then put the dash trim piece back on. And then put the bezel on because that go on top of that. Um, so hold on one second and I'll be right back. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, when reinstalling that thing, you want to put some um, dielectric grease on the connectors. And just because this is an older car, those terminals do get hot after a while. So a little of this will actually help. And prevent any type of corrosion or anything on the wires. So let me go ahead and get this done. All right, just in case you all wanted to see what that original plug looked like, that's it right there. So I took the dielectric, just gooped it up real quick. If you notice, there's uh, like two little clips on the side that actually grabs on to the uh, ignition switch. So what I'm gonna do is just reconnect it back here, push it through the dash, and then reassemble. Alright, so I'll be right back. Leave that light up in there.